Hey everyone, how's it going? Aaron Rift here from NoDQ.com. This is NoDQ's post WWE Fastlane 2017 discussion video. I am being joined this time by the PA sensation, Greg Cherry. How are you doing tonight, Greg? I'm doing fine. Just uh, finished watching Fastlane and we, we have a lot to talk about, don't we? Yes, we do. Oh, by the way, David Payne has been fired. Just kidding. I bet David freaked out when he saw that. When he heard that. A little bit. A little bit. Actually, David is sick. He was unable to do the video tonight. So hopefully David gets well soon. Jeff is busy with his real job. So it's just you and me today. I think for the first time ever. Yeah, I think so. So we'll see how this goes. So yeah, a lot to talk about with this pay-per-view. Not, not the ideal pay-per-view to set up WrestleMania 33. I was almost going to say 34, 33. Oh, geez. Already thinking ahead. Yeah, I am thinking ahead because for this WrestleMania, eh, I'm not so sure how I feel about it right now. Maybe in the end it'll be all right, but just this show, it felt like just an episode of Raw. It, it felt like Raw is, is fast lane. I mean, that's how I felt about this show. What did you think of the show overall? You know, I would agree with that. I, I think generally since the brand split, the Raw-only pay-per-views have felt like an episode of Raw. But that's because Raws are three hours long anyway. So, yeah. I, I mean, I, I would have to agree with that statement. This was not as strong as the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view was, in my opinion. I thought the storylines developed well with the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. And I, to some extent, I get why they booked this show the way they did, although I don't necessarily agree with all the decisions. Uh, I'm sure we'll come up with those a little bit later on. And surprisingly, Goldberg and Owens is not one of them. Yeah. Well, Elimination Chamber, you know, that match itself was something special. You don't see that on television. This show, you had a bunch of matches that I thought a few of them were good, and the rest of it was just angles. So it wasn't like there was anything on this show that was really overly significant with the exception of Goldberg, and we'll get to that later on when we talk about that match. Let's go ahead and start from the beginning. We had the kickoff match, which was Rich Swan and Tozawa against Brian Kendrick and Noam Dar. Um, pretty straightforward cruiserweight tag team match as the kickoff, standard stuff. Uh, Swan got the pinfall victory on Dar with a Phoenix splash off the top rope. Any thoughts you had on this match? Anything that stood, stood out to you? Um, nothing that really stood out. Um, Rich Swan is ridiculously athletic, um, as he's proved before in the Cruiserweight tournament he's and his reign as Cruiserweight. Yeah, <laughs> he is outlandish. That's correct. And the Phoenix Splash surprises me because, I mean, we saw Neville use it. We've seen Seth Rollins use it. So I was a little surprised to see Swan bust that out. I mean, it's an impressive move regardless, but a little surprised to see that be the finisher in the kickoff match. Well, maybe he'll make it his own now. Possibly. So, uh, yeah, that was the kickoff match. Fine way to get people warmed up for the pay-per-view. And then we had the first match of the main pay-per-view card, Samoa Joe versus Sami Zayn. Joe dominated the match early. Zayn was actually able to hit the Blue Thunder Bomb on Joe. Joe kicked out, of course. As we know, everyone kicks out of the Blue Thunder Bomb. Uh, Sami got some offense, but in the end, it was Joe that choked out Zayn to pick up the victory. I thought that this was a good match. I think it served its purpose. I think this match was, was designed to get Joe over and establish him as a force to be reckoned with on the Raw roster. But with that being said, you know, watching them at PWG, I was hoping for something a little bit more spectacular. But to me, it was fine for what it was. What did you think of the match? I, I think you said it exactly right. I mean, this match was designed to put over Samoa Joe as this badass who, I mean, he's the destroyer. He's going yeah. to go in and destroy whoever he possibly can. And that was exactly what it was designed to do. Um, Sami Zayn and him had fantastic matches in NXT. Yeah. And that we were going to see that kind of showcase, unfortunately, because, I mean, what they're doing with Joe, they're pushing him to the moon right now, which is perfectly fine for anybody who's been following his career. But... For what this match was, for what it was designed to do, I thought it was perfectly fine. Yeah, it was perfectly fine. Good way to start off the show. Uh, backstage, we had Bailey um, talking about her match with Charlotte, and she was 
She was basically challenging Charlotte to not have Dana Brooke interfere. Then we had Nia Jax showing up and saying that she would take the title from Bayley if Charlotte didn't. And that would set up what would happen later. Next up, we had Anderson and Gallows versus Enzo and Cass for the Raw Tag Team titles. Enzo and Cass almost had the titles won, but Gallows was able to make the save at the last second. And uh, for the finish, you had Anderson pinning Enzo. Enzo had his foot on the rope, but Anderson pushed the foot off, and Anderson and Gallows retained the tag team titles. Uh, pretty straightforward. I, I expected this. Fairly predictable. I figured Anderson and Gallows would retain here. Um, decent match, but again, th this felt like a raw TV match. What were your thoughts? Yeah, I also picked the club to win on quick picks, and I, I figured there was going to be some shady means uh, just to keep Enzo and Cash chasing the titles. I figured they'd cash in on right. their championship win at WrestleMania to give them that moment since they've never been champions before. So I figured having them win now would be a little bit of a waste. Uh, so that's why I believe they went with a finish that they did with, hey, Enzo's foot was on the ropes, but the ref didn't see it. Right. So obviously they're going to feel a little cheated. Yeah, now, I, I was thinking, like, if the Hardys were going to somehow show up at WrestleMania, then maybe Anderson and Gallows would have won clean. But now that it's looking like the Hardys are going to be in Ring of Honor for the time being, you know, you got you to gotta have challengers for Anderson and Gallows. So in this case, it does make sense for there to be a little bit of a controversial ending so they could set up a rematch at WrestleMania. Although, what, what do you think they're going to do at WrestleMania? Do you think they're going to do a rematch with these guys? Or do you think they're going to just throw in a bunch of tag teams in some sort of gauntlet match or something? Um, I, I don't think they'll do anything like a gauntlet match. This will probably be uh, like it was a couple of years ago where they do they throw four teams in the mix on the yeah. kickoff show and just have them all fight it out and maybe throw them in the battle royal later just to get them on the main card. Yeah, um, that seems to make that seems to make perfect logical sense right there. Yeah. Although funny enough that you mentioned uh, the Hardys because Matt Hardy tweeted something after that they deleted the Bucks of Youth. Yeah. Yeah, I that saw they, that. Yeah, where he was talking about uh, Gallows and Anderson. So, you know, maybe he's just, you know, Screwing doing his Matt Hardy thing right Who now. Knows? But perhaps we could see just a brief stint in Ring of Honor uh, just for them to win the tag team titles. And then they'll drop them and then they'll show up in WWE. We don't know. Yeah, but. That, I thought that was really interesting. I agree. Um, next up, we had... Uh, a backstage segment with Mick Foley talking to Stephanie on the phone. Stephanie was stuck at the airport and she could not make this show. And she instructed Foley to make sure that nothing, nothing controversial went down in the women's and universal title matches. And of course, we know what's going on right now with this whole uh, Mick Foley-Stephanie storyline, most likely leading to Foley being fired or whatever um, so he can have his hip surgery. Um, so that, that was the entire segment. And then we had Sasha Banks versus Nia Jax, um, somewhat similar, um, to Joe versus, uh, Zayn in, in, in terms of Nia dominating most of the match and, and, uh, Sasha trying to make the big comeback. The big difference though, is that in this match, just when you thought Nia was going to pick up the victory, Sasha Banks did a bridged roll up and surprised everyone and won the match. I was a little bit surprised by this. Uh, what were your thoughts? You know, I predicted on quick picks that Sasha would pick up the win, although I figured she'd maybe cheat a little since I... With the heel turn stuff? With, with, yeah, with the... Uh, I'm not sure what the word is. I was going to say blooming heel turn, but I don't think that's the word. <laughs> um, that she is going to... I figured maybe she'd grab the ropes or something, but, you know, a win's a win, Sasha will take it, and it wouldn't be the last time you we know, see her. I, I, I'm not sure I'm not sure if I'm accurate here, but I think when she did the roll-up, it looked like she was grabbing towards the rope, so may, maybe there was something to, to that. And maybe, maybe I missed that, too, but... Yeah, but I, I was surprised. I mean, I thought I thought, I thought thought Nia was going to win this one, but, um, you know, they're, they're still keeping Sasha strong. In the, in the mix for the women's title. We'll see what happens. You know, the match they've been talking about doing is a fatal four-way at WrestleMania, uh, but we'll talk more about that in a minute here when we, when we talk about the women's title match. Um, so next up, we had a bonus, a bonus for all the fans at home. Rusev and Jinder Mahal agreed to compete in separate singles matches, but they were arguing who would actually go out there and have their match first. So they got into a brawl, and Mahal got the best of Rusev, so I guess it was Rusev just laying out on the outside, and it was Jinder Mahal versus Cesaro. Um, 
This was pretty sad, I mean, because of the fact that it's Cesaro and there was, like, no heat whatsoever for this match. The crowd did not care. I actually think they were chanting boring at one point. And when's the last time you heard people chant boring for a Cesaro match? And I think they even chanted punk at one point, too. Yeah, they, they chanted both of those. I heard them both. And, you know, you were saying it. It's kind of sad for a Cesaro match because... And honestly, I don't know why Sheamus came out. You didn't see him the whole match. Um, Did he come out for there for Cesaro, the entrance? He, Sheamus was there for the entrance, but after that, you didn't see him at all. Oh, okay, well... Um, but Cesaro having kind of a throwaway match on a pay-per-view, I mean, I tried to get into it because I wanted it to be decent, but yeah. it was like, uh, uh, the, the, no build-up whatsoever for a Cesaro match, and he, yeah. he deserves better. Hopefully he gets a better match at Mania. Yeah, well, you know, for all we know, he'll just be in the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. And maybe or, he can win it again. Or maybe, like you said earlier, they'll do like the, the four teams match in the kickoff. Cesaro in the kickoff, that, that'll throw people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. Yeah. Probably won't be the last. Yeah, probably won't be. So after the match, we had uh, Rusev taking out Mahal, and then Big Show comes out. So we have Big Show versus Rusev, and the crowd was actually more into this than they were Cesaro's match, despite it being the Big Show. The crowd chanted USA. Um, Rusev had his new haircut, by the way. What do you think of his haircut? You fan? Yes or no? Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, it, it could have looked a lot worse. It could look like Strowman's hair, but I thought it looked terrible. I, but that's just me. I, I don't think he looks too bad with it. I so. think he needs to like buzz it or something. Like the way his hair was kind of sticking out. I don't know. I, I, don't know. I I'll ask my wife. It. She's a hairstylist. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I wasn't a fan with it, but then again, I'm not an expert on hairstyle, so I I just uh, me neither. I don't know. Uh, but anyways, uh, back to the match. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about Rusev taking time off, and I think he's even alluded to it online. Um, so th this certainly came off like that's what they were doing, that, that Rusev was going to be written off for a while with Big Show hitting not one, not two, but three choke slams and then a knockout punch to beat Rusev. And uh, what they're doing with Big Show for WrestleMania, I have no idea. I mean... Right now, it seems like that match with uh, Shaq isn't happening, but it seems like they're building Big Show up for something. So what did you think of this, and what do you think they're going to do with Big Show at WrestleMania? You know, I'm still holding out hope for Show versus Shaq and that they're just trash-talking before Shaq actually shows up on Raw. Like it's a work or something? Yeah, I'm kind of thinking that. But, you know, in this day and age, who knows? Uh, as far as the match was concerned, I actually thought it was decent. Uh Rusev and Show put on a good match. Um, I, I thought it was better than Mahal and Cesaro, which doesn't really speak to how good Cesaro actually is. Really no. doesn't speak to how good Mahal is either. It's just not that great of a match. Yeah, well, and I mean, Show versus Rusev beat it out in the two. I think easily. it's the fact that Mahal just is such a charisma vacuum that Cesaro could not could not get the people into it. Needs to bring back 3MB. Drew Galloway doesn't work for TNA. <laughs> he, can get, he can get as ripped as possible, but people still don't care about him. Nope. I mean, he, he's looking more and more like Scott Steiner with every passing week. It, it, he is disgustingly huge. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people are speculating. They can, they're saying all sorts of things. I'm not even going to go there, but, um, yeah. <laughs> I, don't know what, I don't know what to say about that. I don't either. All right, let's move on then. All right, let's uh, talk about the Cruiserweight title match, Neville versus Jack Gallagher. So, uh, as expected, Neville retained the title. Um, Gallagher did get a good near fall with two headbutts, but uh, the, the headbutts took so much out of him that he was unable to hook the leg. Un unable, let me say that again. Unable to hook the leg. And uh, I, I, I like that. I thought that that was, uh, that was a, good, a good spot. And then uh, Neville, of course, made his comeback, retained the title with the Red Arrow. I thought this was a good match. Um, maybe it could have been a little bit more like the Cruiserweight Classic matches. You know, I, I was ranting on, on Twitter a little bit. You know, I, I feel like on the pay-per-views, the Cruiserweight should be able to just go all out and, and try to have as good of a match as possible. And I felt even in this match, even though it was a good match, they were still holding back a little bit. What were your thoughts on the match? I actually think this was match of the night. 
Well, I mean, it very well could have been. I mean, that that that's a very valid argument, actually. I mean, the two of them really. I know you said they were holding a little bit back, but I thought they were doing incredible. That spot where uh, Neville German suplex Gallagher on his head. It was like, oh <laughs> man, it was tough to watch. Yeah, and then, yeah, I, I I I did think it was a good match and maybe the best match of the night when I think about it. Yeah, because there really weren't too many like top contenders for match of the night between that match and possibly uh, the Reigns uh, Strowman match, yeah. which might surprise people that Reigns had a match of the night. But of course, IWC, they, everybody hates Reigns. But that being said, I really think Neville and Gallagher did very well. And that red arrow was probably one of the best ones I've seen, oh, especially yeah. the way he sold the bump. It was very uh, Rob Van Dam like that. He sold that. Definitely. Nev- Neville's definitely been one of the, the highlights of the cruiserweight division. Probably the best thing since they brought it back. Uh, that's why he's the king. Yep. Um, so we'll see if they go with uh, Austin Aries and what a package Austin Aries has. Oh, absolutely. That, that was quite a nice package. I'm, I'm hoping they do that one-on-one for WrestleMania, but my guess is uh, it's more likely they'll do a, a ladder match or something so they can get everybody on the show and let the Cruiserweights do all the big big spots, jumping off the ladder and stuff. I mean, which Could would be. you prefer? Would you prefer Aries versus Neville, or would you prefer a multi-man ladder match? I prefer a one-on-one Aries versus Neville because, I mean, you, ha- you have the Cruiserweights... You have a bunch of them. It's the multi-man ladder matches, I only truly care about, and I know you don't care for them from last year's WrestleMania because you lost, yeah, you lost everything. Um, I don't care for them except for Money in the Bank because even if they are for a championship, I feel like Money in the Bank has that established importance. Just yeah, throwing it randomly in a ladder match it's like eh, does that guy really deserve it i mean he didn't really earn his way into it it's like no they, they just throw him on there to put him on the card the crying right, out right. loud was in the intercontinental title ladder match last year yeah i definitely agree with you on that i think uh, i would rather see aries one-on-one with neville i i think that that would have a lot of potential to be a, a, a very memorable cruiserweight match at wrestlemania and just the fact that aries is a guy who people are really wanting to see on the main roster and people are chanting him you know, for most of these cruiserweight segments, you get Austin Aries' chance. So I think they they need to just go with him if he's ready to go. But if he's not ready to go, then I think it's it's a strong possibility they'll just do some sort of match where they get all the guys on the show. So we'll see we'll see what happens. His main roster debut might be at WrestleMania. Yeah, that would be cool. That that would be the perfect place to do it. So next up, we had a backstage segment with Paul Heyman. He cut a promo. He teased that Lesnar might be in the building, but said that that is confidential information. Heyman said regardless of who wins between Owens and Goldberg, Lesnar will be the one to win in the end. And then that led to another filler segment. We had the New Day coming out with an ice cream cart, and they cut a promo about their ice cream and being the hosts of WrestleMania. Um... I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm really getting tired of the New Day now. It's like I, I thought they were annoying at first, and then when they turned heel, I thought they were awesome, and now I'm like just over the New Day again. What did you think of this segment with the New Day? I didn't mind it. I, I enjoy Xavier Woods. I mean, I enjoy his channel Up, Up, Down, Down, and I enjoy Big E and Kofi Kingston. The thing that I have a problem with is that they were the longest reigning tag team champions in WWE history. That's not the part I have a problem with. The right. part I have a problem with is since then they have done absolutely nothing. Right. It's like, okay, you have literally the longest reigning tag team champions, not just of this generation, but of all time. And now they're doing nothing. Right. They should be chasing the tag team championships again. They should be, you know, chasing singles championships. Yeah, longest I mean, reigning champions, yeah. I mean, Jericho's the U.S. champion right now. Of course, he's going to have his thing with Owens. But I, I don't know. It, it's very confusing. I mean, I hope they do some entertaining stuff at WrestleMania. I'm sure they will. But I feel like once they were announced as hosts of WrestleMania, it's like, okay, 
So you really have no plans for the New Day going forward. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I felt like it was time to break them up after they lost the titles. But it seems like, you know, with their merchandise still selling, you know, WWE is going to keep dragging this thing as long as possible. And uh, just keep, keep, them, keep them around in some capacity. But I don't know. I'm, I, I just feel like I'm going to be dreading the WrestleMania segments with the New Day. They're going to do all these different things during WrestleMania. And I think it's just going to really get old after a while. Especially when you have a seven-hour show, you know, with the main card being, what, four hours? How was it? How was it last year? Was it was it four it, hours? For it the lasted until mi- no, it was five. Five. I oh mean, man! So can you imagine New that- Day between every match doing a backstage segment? I mean, how how quickly that will get old? It was better than what they did last year. <laughs> well, Losing to the League of Nations. We'll, we'll see. Don't jinx it. <laughs> well. All right. So let's move on here to the. One of the big matches of the night, uh, Roman Reigns versus Braun Strowman. Reigns came out, mostly got booed. Um, what did you think of his shoes? He had these, uh, these shoes with, with white on the bottom, some sort of fancy sports shoes. What did you think of that? I, I didn't even notice it until the match was over, honestly. Oh, really? I, I, I wasn't paying attention to his I, wardrobe. I thought, it like, it was a, I thought it was an eyesore. Like, I could not stop looking at his shoes. Like, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with the shoes. It's just that the white at the bottom, like, just doesn't go with the entire black outfit he had. I don't know. It, I, just, I, it, it was an eyesore I, for me. Well, he had white, like, details on him. So I was like, it didn't even... I, I don't notice that kind of thing. I Somebody pointed out, like, they had, like, arrows pointing on Twitter. I was like, oh, I guess he did have white on his shoes. Okay. I was like, it, 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 I didn't focus on it. It's, it's, that's not what... I don't well, watch wrestling for the fashion. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know some of us do. Like uh, my friends and I, back in the day, we would always pay attention to what color boots the guys were wearing to see if that would indicate a heel turn or something. You know, we were we were always having these conspiracy theories about that. But well, that's good. That's good that you didn't pay attention to that because it, it was bugging me for for a lot <laughs> of the match. Um, so, anyways, we had. Reigns trying to knock Strowman off his feet. We had Strowman missing a big boot going over the top rope. They fought on the outside. Strowman power slammed Reigns through the announce table. And um, the crowd was really into this. They, they really liked the idea of Reigns getting slammed through the announce table. Um, but then, um, I, I don't know if it was just me, but it felt like Reigns did not really sell this at all. I think, I think what happened was Strowman picked up Reigns, threw him back in the ring, and then Reigns pretty much immediately hit a spear. And Strowman kicked out. And then Strowman regained control. Um, He then went to the top rope, attempted a splash from the top rope, but missed. And that led to Reigns hitting a second spear and picking up the victory, thus ending Braun Strowman's reign of terror. So what were your thoughts on this match? I thought it was good. Um, First of all, I was surprised that the referee didn't call for the bell for the uh, power slam through the announce table. It was like, isn't that a DQ sometimes? Yeah. Well, there were or, more or, questionable they, referee decisions later, but we'll we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Right. But I know I know why they had Reigns go over Strowman. I know why they did it. But much like when they were building up Umaga for basically an entire year, only to have him lose to a freaking schoolboy to Cena, they did the same thing with Strowman here. They had him lose clean. It's like. I know it took a couple spears and several Superman punches, but really, yeah. I, I know you want to have Reigns versus Taker, and you want to make Reigns look strong. But you know, you had Cena versus The Rock for the title, and you had Cena lose the pay per view before to the Shield. It's like pick and choose here. Well, I, I figured this was going to happen because in the build up, Strowman was constantly getting the best of Reigns. So what are they going to do? Have Reigns lose again on the pay-per-view before facing Undertaker. There was just no way. I mean, I, I figured Reigns was going to win clean. That that was my prediction, actually. Some people thought Undertaker was going to interfere in the match. But, no, that that made no sense. Well, yeah, but people were like saying, well, you know, back in 2015, remember uh, Lesnar versus Rollins when Undertaker showed up randomly? And I hated that. I, I was very critical of that. I thought it was stupid for Undertaker to just randomly appear like that so i'm glad that didn't happen actually so i'm not sure what other outcome wwe could have done other than reigns winning here you know 
I, I, I figured it was going to happen. I, I figured it was inevitable and people should, should embrace themselves for it, you know? You know, maybe they could have had Reigns get disqualified. Like, Strowman wouldn't stay down, so Reigns just picks up a chair and beats the crap out of him. And he still looks strong, even though he lost. You know, maybe do something like that. And you don't lose any heat on Strowman because he would have won the match. And it shows you need to do whatever you can. I mean, having him lose clean to a couple spears, just it doesn't make him look weak necessarily. But, you know, where do you go from here? You build him up to be this monster. It's like, oh, well, Reigns just beat him. Well, he wins the Andre the Giant Battle Royal, I guess. Well, that's probably what he's going to do. That, that's what I figured, you know, when I was laying out the, the scenario here. I figured, okay, they'll, they'll do something to rebuild Strowman, so maybe he'll win the Battle Royal. That, that'll be their way of saying, hey, we're going to rebuild the guy. I mean, they were able to rebuild Rusev. After, after his feud with Cena was over, it felt like uh, Rusev was going nowhere, and then they did, they did rebuild him again and, and made him important. So, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's the kiss of death for Strowman. They may still be able to keep him as a monster, but, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. It is yeah. Roman Reigns coming off very strong for the inevitable match now, I believe, with The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Um, so we'll see where things go with that and see how much angrier the fans can get at WrestleMania. Oh, especially if he wins. Yeah, and doesn't turn heel if he just beats him and, and stays as a face. Yeah, imagine the reaction. The, the internet will just explode. Oh, it will. It'll be, it'll be terrible. It will. Um, so next up we had uh, Bailey versus Charlotte for the Raw Women's title. Charlotte doing a lot of trash talking. Oh, by the way, she uh, did come out with Dana Brooke, but then sent Dana Brooke to the back. So a little bit interesting here. So it's like Charlotte was almost acting like a face, like having Dana go to the back, you know, so she could beat Bailey on her own one-on-one. -on -one. But then during the match, Charlotte was acting like a heel, doing the trash talking, calling Bailey a fan, asking where's Sasha at, you know, that sort of thing. Um, Charlotte hit a moonsault, Bailey kicked out of that, and then um, they were both on the outside. Charlotte was going to do a moonsault to the outside, but then Sasha ran down to the ring. And this is where the match like pretty much fell apart. And by, by the way, real quick, earlier in the match, uh, Bailey botched something pretty bad. Did you, did you notice that? Oh, yeah. The, her like springboard elbow that she's done before, it's like she couldn't get that right. It's like, eh. yeah, she tried it once. She couldn't she couldn't get it going. And then she tried, she tried it a second, a second time. time. She missed wildly. Yeah, it's like it's like one of those moments where you, you, you think wrestling's real and then you see that and you're like, what? Wrestling's fake. You know, that sort of thing. It's like one of those moments. I'm sure a lot of kids watching probably had broken hearts after seeing that saying, oh, no, wrestling's they probably fake. didn't even notice. Yeah. So anyways, uh, Sasha Banks came down, and th this is where the match really got weird. So Sasha comes down, and um, I, I watched the replay clip of it because I wasn't sure. But yeah, Sasha came down. She made an aggressive physical movement towards Charlotte, and the referee was right there to see it and did nothing. No DQ, and um, the referee did not call for the bell, and Charlotte, uh, she threw down Sasha. She got Bailey back in the ring. Um, Charlotte was about to win the match when Sasha, um, I think she pulled up, pulled Charlotte. Was it Charlotte or did she pull the referee? I think she pulled Charlotte. It would have definitely been a DQ if she, she touched the referee. I think, I think she just pointed out that Charlotte was using the tights on or Bailey. Something. She did something to distract, uh, the pinfall from taking place. And, mm. um, Bailey took advantage of this and, and picked up the win. So Charlotte's streak is over on fast lane. I was not expecting this. I was not expecting after all this hype and build up for Charlotte Streak to end this on a B pay per view. That shocked the hell out of me. What did you think of the match and, and the finish here? Um, I thought the match was decent. I mean, like you mentioned, the botch with a springboard elbow kind of ruined it a little bit. They recovered. Um, I predicted Charlotte would regain the title just to continue and become. 25 time champion by the end of the year. Yeah. But, you know, I, I see why they booked it this way. I understand. And we mentioned the fatal four way earlier, but I am thinking in the back of my mind that they do what they talked about months ago and do Sasha versus Bailey. And my rationale for it was, well, Sasha can't beat Charlotte on pay-per-view. Maybe she can beat Bailey. And that's why she helped her. 
Well, that, that would make sense. And uh, I, I actually uh, was reading something on Raw Talk, you know, that's actually going on as we started doing the video. Apparently, Sasha did this promo when she was acting very much like a heel. So, you know, it seems like they are going in that direction. And uh, maybe, that, maybe that'll be her motivation that, that she, she feels she can beat Bailey and not Charlotte. I, I think that, that, that would make a lot of sense. But then again, if, if it makes sense, then who knows if WWE will actually do it or not. Well, it's the Raw writers, so they probably wouldn't. If it was SmackDown, they might. Yeah, maybe. Um, so then we had the main event, the, the highly anticipated Goldberg versus Kevin Owens. You know, we were all hoping for this 45-minute back-and-forth uh, Omaga. Or, did I just say Omaga? I meant Kenny Omega Umanga. versus... Um, Okada, 45-minute um, classic with Goldberg and Kevin Owens. But uh, what ended up happening was Goldberg came out, did his usual entrance. Kevin Owens came out, and then before the match officially began, Owens went to the outside. He stalled forever. I think he spent like five minutes stalling. And then finally he got in the ring. Chris Jericho's music hit, and Jericho came out, and the referee decided all right, let's go ahead and ring the bell now. So when, when Owens is distracted, the referee signals for the bell to ring to start the match. Goldberg hits a spear, hits a jackhammer, and in 21 seconds is the new WWE champion, universal champion, I should say. So what did you think about this, this, epic, this epic showdown between Goldberg and Kevin Owens? You know, part of me thought that Owens was just killing time for Lesnar to come down. Um, as soon as I heard Jericho's music, I was like, oh, well, Owens is losing the title. Well, you know, and then you, another, you know what's funny about another, that real quick before you get to that? Um, somebody who was at the show live was tweeting me, and he told me before the match started, Jericho's um, Titantron video actually popped up on the screen for a second. So that pretty <laughs> much gave away the finish of the match. I just wanted to throw that out there, so so you can go ahead. Ah, well done, production team. <laughs> yeah. Um, but once Jericho's music hit, I had two thoughts. I was like, either Owens is losing the title, or Jericho's going to run down, and there won't be a match at all, and it'll just be Jericho versus Owens for the title, which I would have been fine with the latter option, but, I mean, they're going to do Goldberg versus Lesnar for the title, because, you know, once in a lifetime, all over again with, Rock and Cena. Yeah. They have to do it and have the title on the line. And watch. At WrestleMania, it'll be Brock beating Goldberg in like a minute and 30 seconds. So in the end, Goldberg will have done a grand total of like 10 moves in his WWE comeback. <laughs> Pretty much. Do you think that this hurt the prestige of the WWE title? Do you think that this was just too over the top with having Goldberg not do anything? Or do you think that this was acceptable for what it was? I mean, let's face it, Goldberg didn't win it cleanly because yeah. Owens was distracted, so Goldberg just took advantage of that. And to be fair, uh, Goldberg took advantage of a distraction when he beat Hogan for the WCW title. That is true. So, so I mean, Goldberg kind of won his titles though. by... At least they would have had, you know, I think, I think it would have been nice if they had at least somewhat of a match, you know, for like three or four minutes, you know let Owens blindside him and get a little bit of offense, and then Goldberg makes a comeback, and then Owens like does something to cheat, and that leads to Jericho coming out. I don't know. I just would have rather than had done something so we know Goldberg can actually still do somewhat of a match. You know, Who yeah. knows? You know, We still don't know if he can really do much of anything. And it just well, felt I, like they were trying to cover up that he really cannot work a match of any substance. Well, I was also kind of thinking that maybe – you know, the bell would ring and then Owens would just walk out and take a count out loss. No, that would have been but, funny. Or they never rang the bell. I was like, okay, what are they waiting for? Or, you know, Owens would try to flee and then that's when Jericho's music would hit and Jericho would prevent Owens from being able to run away and take a count out. Yeah. They couldn't have done that, but whatever. Um, so, yeah, overall, I thought this was a pretty mediocre show. And uh, up on NoDQ.com, I put up the poll right now. 73% thumbs down for this show. So, um, oh, that's actually lower than it was when we started. So, what, what, yeah, it was 77 earlier, so it, it's getting a little bit better, better feedback, but, but that's not saying much. Um, so if you had to give the show a letter grade, what would you give it? Uh, I'd give it a C. I mean, I mean, it, ha it had its decent moments, 
but it was nothing spectacular, and it's it was really just a filler show to get the mania. I mean, like I said earlier, Elimination Chamber was far better. I mean, you had a couple decent matches on this show, but like we said at the beginning, it was pretty much like an episode of Raw. Yeah. So, well, I mean, yeah, if this was an episode of Raw, I'd say it was a, it was a decent show, but I mean, this is a pay per view, so and and my my excitement for WrestleMania is not that high right now, and I think Fastlane should make you excited for WrestleMania, and I was pretty bored for most of the show. Um, so I'm going to give it a D plus. I, I, I felt it was one of the worst WWE pay-per-views in quite some time. I mean, most of the time throughout the, the, the last several years, you would have pay-per-views that would have several really good matches. And I felt like you had Neville and, um, and Gallagher, which was good. And you had Reigns and Strowman, which was good. But to me, there was nothing that was really must-see on this show. I felt like if you missed this pay-per-view, you, you missed pretty much nothing. So to me, that, that. That, that's uh, below average. But that, that, that's uh, my final feedback on it. D plus. Yeah, maybe I should go C minus. The solid C might have been too high. All right, well, you'll, you'll be the positive one of the two of us. Um, yeah. So we'll, we'll see. What did you guys think of the show? Go ahead and leave your feedback on uh, the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Aaron Riff No DQ. Thank you for being on today, Greg. I appreciate you being here. Um, Absolutely. And maybe we'll do the four. Per- we'll try the four-person panel one more time for WrestleMania. Um, hopefully, uh, people will will like that one. I mean, I think part of the issue with that last one we did was the fact that Jeff's um, earbuds were making too much noise or whatever. Um, I, right. I, I I thought the video was really solid when we had the four-person panel. So we'll give it one more shot for WrestleMania and see if uh, if people like that or not. Uh, maybe that they they know you a little bit more now, though they'll, they'll be more accepting of it. Um, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, so any plugs you want to get out there before we wrap this up? Uh, just Twitter and Instagram at PA Sensation for both of them. Um, I don't post to Instagram a whole whole lot. Uh, you'll see random stuff from me on Twitter. Um, hopefully after WrestleMania, I'll be starting my own show on this very channel. Uh, good. Hopefully a longer discussion show because, like I said, I'm done with quick picks since I'm on uh, these shows and the. Pre-show moving on up. shows now. I am. I'm moving on up in the world. So and, hopefully, uh, David Payne, you're not being to... replaced. Don't freak out. He like totally freaked out. He's like, oh no, you're gonna have Greg on and not me, and you're gonna end up replacing replacing me with him. He he was like getting all worked up. Um, so hopefully he he's okay after the beginning of this video. You know, <laughs> yeah, probably freaked out. Uh, but anyways, that'll wrap it up for this video. We will see you guys for. WrestleMania predictions and of course our big WrestleMania post show. So stay tuned for that and stay tuned for no DQ and a video this week right on nodq.com. See you next time.